Muchachos y muchachas, Hunter Biden yet again is resurfacing back in the headlines. And of course, this is always a question as to the timing. You know, this laptop has been out for a long time now, and it just seems peculiar that there's more news upon rolling news about this entire laptop. So anyways, um, some recent also just some recent Hunter Biden news, you know, to also consider. And it also kind of coincides in time. Just last week, it was reported that DC officials are actually starting to accept that this is his legitimate laptop, which is very weird to like for them to admit that. So anyway, that's just recent news. I think that that's relevant somehow because it just seems like his news uh, popped up. But so what's been of the latest is that it's being resurfaced that there was some sort of business dealings about Hunter Biden uh, having some sort of $2 million retainer in the efforts to unfreeze Libyan uh, frozen uh, frozen Libyan assets. Um, yeah, it's a really complicated situation. Stay right there. We're going to go through it. Yeah. yeah. All right, jumping straight into it. Exclusive new emails reveal. Hunter Biden has asked for $2 million plus success fees to help unfreeze Libyan assets, uh, in essential, a shakedown. So these emails, uh, they actually resurfaced. It had nothing to do or any relationship to uh, with any prior emails that were already disclosed to the public in regards to Hunter Biden's uh, laptop, which, we already know was pretty damning. So these were not connected to any of that. These were so the emails that were actually obtained by a uh, business insider uh, within reporting for a different story. So this was some information that was uncovered by beautiful accident. And it states um, they're not connected to the controversial emails from Hunter Biden's laptop in which his supporters have claimed were distributed as part of a disinformation campaign. And while it appears from the new emails that Libya deal was never consummated, the documents offer a window into the mechanics of beltway influence peddling and the stock that was put in Biden's political connections, particularly his relationship with his father, who is vice president at the time. So it is suspected that Hunter Biden uh, was indeed leveraging and flaunting his relationship with his father and um, his father that could possibly, and this is what this article is insinuating, that he could possibly use his power for leverage in business deals, which by the way, Politico had actually reported that uh, just a few recent years ago about Joe Biden and his notable uh, actions in the past in which have either given jobs to family members or leveraged business deals. Uh, uh, and so that was apparent. So this is not a secret. This is actually an open secret. Many people know about this, about you know their family and the leverage that they really had within their, I guess, their caliber to, you know, proposition some business deals and win them over. So this is the first email that was uncovered. Uh, it's dated January 28, 2015 sent from Sam Juahari, a Democratic donor with businesses in the Persian Gulf, who is helping spearhead the Libya project. It was addressed to Sheikh Mohammed Rabani and other Obama campaign donor involved in the proposal. In the email, Juahari is frank about what Biden would bring to the table, basically saying, hey, you know, um, this is Hunter Biden. You guys can screenshot this if you want to, or pause this if you want to read it out. But basically, I'm just going to gener uh, generalize it. They're basically talking Talking about Hunter Biden, uh, his fee, which is $2 million retainers, plus other fees. And um, apparently he has a small circle, as it's been uh, insinuated that they discuss that they have a small circle. And because of his father's position as vice president, that that could possibly be a leverage to uh, their efforts in unfreezing these $30 billion in assets. Um, then it goes through his connections. He was the uh, chairman of the UN World Food Program, which means that he was, you know, rubbing elbows with all these big people. Um, so anyway, uh, that was a proposition, I believe, that Juahari was actually sending um, in a business regard. Then it says, at least one aspect of Juahari's assessment of Biden is erroneous. Biden was discharged from the Navy Reserve, not the Army. Oh, because it was mentioned about his past. You know, uh, the only thing about this guy is that he was discharged from the you know, military because of 
uh, some drug problem. So anyway, this is basically just clarifying that we don't know that for certain, so they can't report that. Uh, moving on, Biden's position on the United Nations meant he enjoyed face-to-face -face access to heads of state, as I said before. Biden's apparent offer to provide access to highest level is in the Chinese government is also telling. China, which was attempting to strengthen its position in Africa, had been particular source of frustration for Libya's new government, which was struggling of free up to $15 billion in foreign assets that had been frozen by Obama during the Gaddafi regime in 2013 according to The New Yorker. Hunter Biden had traveled with his father on an official visit to Beijing, where he had arranged for the vice president to briefly meet with one of his business partners to lobby for the American delegation's hotel. Okay, so it's not just his connections with his father, but there were several connections. And, and notice how it went to China. It, apparently, he was on the board of some company, and even throughout all of this news surfacing, he still stayed on the board of that Chinese-backed uh, company. So anyway, um, let just a little bit about uh, th these two characters, Juahari and Al Rabani. Uh, they were mid-tier political donors who had paid handsomely to attend Obama-Biden campaign events, where Juahari posed for photographs with both Obama and Biden. All right, so. This is interesting because uh, there is actually some sort of reporting from the Gateway Pundit. I wanna say uh, this was last year actually. And they mention um, that much has been already been written about both Rabani and Juahari. Uh, more, more yet is to come given their alleged illegal campaign donations and meetings with upper echelon of the US Democratic Party leadership. Um, there was a particular um, uh, I believe a particular book that this guy read something about like the secrets of Washington and he pr pretty much used that as a blueprint. Um, actually, this was uh, back here. Uh, there, there was a person who was trying to spearhead the whole effort of unfreezing the Libyan assets. And, you know, we believe that it was Juahari and Al Rabani who also were uh, part of this project. So anyway, it's been uh, reported before, uh, I believe by the Daily Mail, that these two had made illegal foreign contributions towards the Democratic Party. It continues, in fact, we've been told there is soon uh, to be an in-depth series coming out about Rabani and Juahari that will shock even the most hardened political veteran. Sam Juahari is of Lebanese Venezuelan descent and a citizen of the United States, Venezuela, and Lebanon, but lives in Kuwait, where he met his wife, Kuwaiti citizen. Sheikh Rabani is a Saudi citizen married to an American citizen and a former model, Kate Rabani. This duo has had their hands in everything from building U.S. bases in Iraq to contracting to unfreeze Libyan assets around the world. They have been giving many to the Democrats, including Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, Elliot Engel, Howard Berman, and some numerous state Democrat parties. They also donated heavily to John McCain and Lindsey Graham. It has been alleged that it may be soon confirmed that they bundled millions of dollars for Obama, Clinton, and other Democrats, with at least some of it possibly coming from non-American citizens. Not bad for their former hair transplant salesman and wannabe Ken dogs just jet-setting in uh, Condition. Anyway, he uh, does a little, throws a little punch towards them. So that's very interesting that these two guys um, were in uh, what seems to be communication with Hunter Biden and, you know, uh, just them you know, uh, making those already contributions out there to uh, possible Democratic, big Democratic, um, you know, people and political figures, and then just having that direct access to Hunter Biden like that, and, you know, having that proposition for $2 million retainer, he will help uh, leverage, Hunter Biden speaking, his um, contacts, we'll just say his contacts, to unfreeze these assets. Um, but of course, there's a shakedown in the mix. So anyway, guys, let me know. I know this is a very complicated story, but um, you know, again, it surfaces up into the news. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Please let me know uh, what do you think the relationship is between these uh, political donors and being so close to Hunter Biden and you know all that jazz. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for loving me, loving the channel, loving the 
information that I give you. And if you feel that it's important and you want to keep me going, you can go to nataliedenise.com slash donate, um, or there are links, easy links in the description below. Guys, thank you so much for uh, tuning in, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Yeah. Yeah.